Okay, now I'm going to mix the value range for this study. I want to go from what will technically be my lightest light, which is over here. This is underpainting white, and I've put a little bit of my dark tone into this so that it's not a pure white. Um, it's very close to pure white, but it's just barely a step down from pure white. My darkest dark is almost completely raw umber mixed with a little bit of blue black or whatever black you have. It doesn't matter if you have ivory black or, or lamp black. You'd put just a touch of it into that brown so that it's not really a brown. It's more like a very dark, warm, neutral color. And there's the tiniest bit of the white mixed in here. I mean just the tiniest bit, which uh, lends a little more opacity to that color. Um, but it's not quite as dark as it could be if it were just raw umber and, um, and blue-black. So that's my darkest dark, and this is my lightest light. Now I need a middle tone. I'm going to take a fairly large scoop of the, of the lightest light. Before I mix in, before I dip into my dark, I'm just going to wipe off my knife a little bit. I'm going to grab some of this dark, a fairly healthy dose, let's say, about that proportion, and let's just see what that does when I mix it up. You'll notice I'm scooping, I mash down on the paint, then I scoop up the whole mass, flip it over, and smash it down again. I don't stir like this. Don't do this. That, that'll take you forever. Take, scoop it up, flip it over, and smash it. So I'm smashing it until there's no marbling in it. You have one consistent tone of paint. That's still a little bit too light, so I'm going to wipe my knife off as best I can here, clean it off on my paper towel, put some more dark into my mixture. At this point, I might be up to half and half. You can't go by um, a recipe, though, because it depends on your paint as far as how staining it is uh, and how quickly this, this pile of white paint will go to being dark. Now, I'm going to call this the middle tone. It may or may not be exactly in the middle. It doesn't matter. It's pretty much in the middle between these two variations. But it's very important. You'll notice I have my lightest light on one side, my darkest dark on the other side, and then I keep my middle tone literally, physically, in the middle of these other two tones. It's a little more easily to judge it with your eye when it's like that. Now I, I want to come in between these two, between my darkest dark and my middle tone. So I'm going to grab up a scoop of that middle tone, and I'm going to grab up a scoop of the dark, and I'm going to mix those two together. Notice, again, they are this batch that I'm mixing is physically in between those two batches. I don't go jumping around on my palette. I want them physically near, near each other so that it's easier for my eye to judge what I'm getting. Now, this is really grouping with this, the, the middle tone. If you squint your eyes, you'll see it's much closer to this tone than it is to that tone. So I need to mix some noticeably more dark into it. I'm going to scoop some off to the side over here just so I don't have as much paint that I'm mixing into. Grab a fresh paper towel, put a little bit more dark in here to see if I really can come to a tone that is closer to being right in the middle between these two. And that's much better. That's much better. And you'll notice I still have this scooped off to the side. I'm not mixing quite, you know, otherwise I'd have this giant pile of paint there, and I don't want to do that. I think I need to darken it a little bit more. I'm going to grab some more dark and mix in there. The bigger your base pile of paint is, the more of whatever you're mixing into it, the more of that you'll have to have in order to affect a change. So that's why once you get to much too large a pile, you want to scoop some off and pull it off to the side so that you're not mixing into such a huge pile of paint. I go a little bit darker still. And I keep squinting my eyes the whole time to sort of get a notion of when I am between those two colors. 
If it doesn't jump and group with that or jump and group with that, I think, okay, that's kind of a middle tone between those two. Now I can actually mix other middle tones in between these two and in between those two. So let me try to grab just part of this paint. Notice how I keep scooping it, flipping it over, and smashing it down until I get a uniform tone of paint. I don't want to see any marbling in that paint. For this style of painting, we want very um, smooth amounts of paint. Take some out of this pile, some out of that pile. And go in, but notice I still have them physically placed in between. Whatever I'm mixing, it's still physically in between the two other tones so that I can size it up a little bit more easily so that I can judge at what point the value is correct. A little dry lump of paint there. Get that off to the side. Otherwise it's just irritating. Okay, so now I have five tones from the middle tone to the darkest dark. Not bad. It's okay. Now I'm going to try to do the middle tone between the middle tone and the lightest light. It's not bad, it's okay. Now I've got to go between those two. Now what I will probably wind up here with is nine tones because you keep going to the middle so you're going to come up with an odd number rather than an even number and that's okay. You don't have to have ten tones. Uh, when you're studying um, everybody talks about a scale of one to ten and that's fine. Uh, if you get nine tones that are nicely spaced in between each other then you're doing pretty good and that's plenty to start your painting with for the day. little bit of this white in here. You want to make sure when you're starting out that you've got nice big piles of paint at either end and that your middle tone is a nice big pile of paint too. I think in looking at this that this tone needs to be a little bit lighter than it is. So I'm going to put a little bit of that lighter color into it. And I may lighten the number two tone as well. I think I will. This one now, from where I'm standing, I can see a nice difference between this one and this one and this one. This one and number two and number three are almost the same tone. So I'm going to take some of my lightest light and I'm going to mix it into that number two tone to just make a difference between the number two and number three tone. I'm working on freezer paper that has just been taped to a piece of masonite. Uh, you should remember, as long as you paint on the waxy side of that paper, you'll be just fine. Now I have some left over here, and what I usually do, I mean I certainly will not throw it in the trash, that'd just be wasteful. I'll see which, if any of these tones, it matches, and then I'll add to that pile. It sort of, adds, it sort of matches that one but I need this pile to be bigger. So I'm going to blend it into this one. I'm going to darken that pile just a little bit, just so I have plenty of that tone. And 
Now I'm getting too big a pile there. Shave some off and stick it back over here. Put a little bit of dark in this one, which I hope I didn't just put too much in. Now I think I'm okay. I want to stay between these two tones. You can see how important it is to have these things physically lined up from light to dark. Because if this was across the palette, you can't judge it. It's really hard at that point to tell if you're staying between the other two values. So you really want to keep your palette neat. And if you need to, you know, I've been pretty darn neat with this. If you need to, mix on a separate piece of paper and then put your scoops of paint over uh, one at a time just separately. And I think I'm going to darken this one a little bit because there's some room for that to go darker before it gets to the darkest dark. Yeah, I like that better. So it's adjusting it. It's, it's paying a lot of attention just visually to what you're doing. This is a great exercise to do just on your own if you can uh, just sit around on an afternoon and just mix up values. You will not be wasting your time. You can save that paint in any kind of little plastic containers like a prescription bottle is a really good way to save um, a big blob of wet paint. Okay, now this I'm going to take and put on my, I have another palette over here to the side that's not on camera. And I'm just going to do that so I don't waste the paint. Another thing you can do is take a fairly clean paper towel, dip it in a little bit of turpenoid, it's wet here, and you can just wipe off your palette if you really want to be tidy about it. You don't have to, but it might help you to be able to see the values as you're painting. Now I have a fairly good range of tone going from lightest light all the way down to darkest dark. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That's what I thought I was going to come up with. Um, and now I'm free to mix in between any of these if I feel that I need, once I get on the painting, if I feel I need a half step, I can just take my brush and mix in between two of them and come up with a sort of subtone, if you will. All right, those are my values as I've mixed them, and now I'll get on to starting the painting.